Now, I have something very important that I will be doing, potentially, at points during, during Bible study. Because my son has been playing Pokemon Go. But because of the bad weather, we haven't been able to get out and, and do Pokestop runs. And that means he's out of Pokeballs for it. So, so the church is a Pokestop. So I can take the, I, I said I would take the iPad to work with me and I, I, would, I would click on the church and spin it every once in a while so he could get more stuff so he can keep playing the game. So if you see me stop and go, hoo, 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 and that, that means I'm just spinning the Pokestop for my son, Ambrose. Not for myself. I'm leaving my own phone away. I don't need to spin it now. I can, I can put it down. But yes, happy Wednesday. Uh, today we are going to uh, look a little bit more at, uh, at John and uh, really what starts to happen with John the Baptist. Um, the saint's day today is actually St. Silas, fellow worker of Peter and Paul, so that'll probably come up in the prayer of the day. And as it is Wednesday, we will be doing uh, the litany. And just as a reminder, it is one week until Ash Wednesday. So we will be doing midweek services. I'll uh, have those up uh, broadcast on Facebook as well. We're going to do a, a rotation this year between uh, here and uh, Emmanuel Dwight and then Zion Bonfield. And our theme is going to be uh, Do Not Be Afraid. And we'll have six different sermons on not being afraid of different things. So that is the plan for the uh, Lent. We're not going to have meals before service this Lent. Uh, just not quite, not quite there yet. But uh uh, next next time and next year next year they'll be back and I'll get to make copious soup so but with that all set out of the way let's begin with our normal morning devotion page 295 in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen in the morning O Lord you hear my voice in the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is, let's see, because it goes over to the next page, uh, various verses of Psalm 38. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have sunk into me, and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. O Lord, all my longing is before you. My sign is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me. In the light of my eyes, it also is gone from me. My friends and my companions stand aloof from my plague, and my nearest kin stand far off. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. One of the things that comes on is we as Americans today, really do tend to love the new, the new and improved. And as such, we tend to have shorter memories, I'll, I'll put it that way. There is nothing new under the sun. Psalm 38 seems to dovetail a lot with the themes of the past year. And you know what? The Lord remains the Lord. God be merciful to us. Lord have mercy, as we will pray in just a bit. Our reading for today is John 3, 22, through the beginning of chapter 4, verse 6. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there with them and was baptizing. John was also baptizing at Anion near Salim, because water was plentiful there, and people were coming and being baptized, for John had not yet been put in prison. Now discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he 
who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptized, and then all are going to him. John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom, the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things to his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey, who does never not heed, hear, the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God remains on him. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. That is noon. So uh, tomorrow we'll get the story of the woman at the well. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Thank you be to God. Tomorrow we'll get the story of the woman at the well. We get just enough of the, the setup for it. But this little passage has, I think, one of my favorite verses, and I actually think the best description of Christian living. The, uh, on, on Monday nights, we're going through Galatians, and we're getting into a lot of Christian freedom, and especially next Wednesday, we're going to start chapter 5. So, so that should be a great discussion on Christ, Christian freedom. But if you want to know what your life as a Christian is, it's this. He must increase, I must decrease. That, that right there is what Christian living is. Um, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Oh yeah, that is a smudge on the screen. <laughs> um, this is the, the point and the idea. Um, John's disciples are worried that John's not as famous. And John's like, yeah, that's the whole point. Because I was never the point. I, my, my job was to point to the Christ, to the Messiah who's coming, and he's here, so why should I be happy that less people are paying attention to me and they're, they're now paying more attention to Jesus? That, that's my job. One of the things that we learn as Christians and that we is very hard because as human beings we are utterly selfish people to the core. It's not about us. The Christian faith is not about me, Eric Brown, I'm awesome. Nor is everything in life about me. It's about Christ. Now it is Christ for me and I receive many benefits and you receive many benefits from Christ but the story is not our hero story. We're not the hero of the tale. It's not how great and wonderful we are, how strong we are. It is how strong Christ is. And, and as Christians, as believers, really growing and maturing in the faith is learning to make things more and more focused on Christ and seeing more and more how even the things that you do are things that Christ has done through you. Oh, my talents are great. Well, yeah, that's because Christ gave them to you. That says more about Jesus than it does about you. We'll get to this in more detail when we get into the, uh, the, the creed. But it really is all about Jesus. 
If you serve your neighbor, whatsoever you have done to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. He must increase, I must decrease. Um, when, they, when they persecute you, well, yeah, they persecuted Christ. Therefore, it's about Christ. This is the whole thing. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of hardship for pastors. And I, I'm thinking about this simply because I had a winkle yesterday and I, I'm kind of in the, the uh, circuit visitor mind and just like that. A lot of the secret for pastors is to get yourself out of the way of Jesus. You're an instrument. In fact, the thing I pray before service every time is uh, Luther's prayer for, or before the sermon is Luther's prayer for pastors, the sacristy prayer. It begins, you see us how fit I am for this office. But since the people need the teachings and the instruction, and you've appointed me, be with me. Use me as thy instrument. Uh, may thy Holy Spirit work with me. Yea, may he work in me to will and do according to your strength and pleasure. It's not about us. It's about God working through us. And this is the reality of it. It doesn't matter about our strength. We may decrease. In fact, we're supposed to. He will increase. Even and. Uh, he will increase ever more and more, even until the day that he comes again, and we see him in full face-to-face. -face. So, with that being said, we'll pause there, and we will move on to our commandment for today. Our catechism lesson, oh, I opened right to the page, is the Ninth Commandment. So, what is the Ninth Commandment? You shall not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house, or get in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. One of the great lines of uh, the scriptures is when Paul in the New Testament somewhere says, uh, I, I wouldn't know what coveting was unless the law told me not to do it. But now that it has spoken, I covet all the time. <laughs> I see what and uh, it's interesting because we do get two commandments about coveting. And what, what does it mean to covet? Really, to covet something is to turn it into an idol. It's to turn it into something that you want and are focused upon. And there's a danger in that. Um, few things can make your, you more unhappy than a commercial showing you something that you don't have. And so we're warned, don't covet your neighbor's house. Don't covet his stuff, his things. Oh, this is something we should learn as Americans. And the real reason that, that we're not to covet is not just that, well, one, we're not to steal. So if my neighbor has something, it's my job to help him protect and improve his possessions and income. But even if I covet, even I'm not planning on stealing, but just, oh, I wish... I wish I could have a house like that. Let's say that, that's, no, I'll do car, I'll do car. I wish I could have a car like that. That car looks so awesome. That, that might all be true. But if I'm thinking like that, and then I go look at my car, how do I view that car? My car, the, the car that is mine, do I view it as a great and wonderful gift to me from God? Or... Or do I now despise it? Do I look, eh, bleh, it's not as good. Coveting changes the way we view gifts that God gives us. Ah, uh, how about their lives? Uh, that'll be the next one. That's, com that's commandment 10. We'll get that tomorrow. But if, if we are caught up in coveting, what it really is doing is it's taking every gift that we've received from God and diminishing it. Treat them as though it's not a great and wonderful gift. My, uh, my car that I get to use, because we've got the, the car that fits for the kids. My car that I get to use is older. It's got a really missing, nasty roof paint thing gone. It's got 100,000 miles on it. It's not got all the newest high tech. But you know what it is? It's a wonderful car. Still gets good gas mileage. And it's a great, wonderful thing. Should I let some flashy advertisement make me treat that wonderful gift with disdain? And so this is the thing. Be wary of what's trying to make you treat what you have received from God with disdain. 
the, the effective secret to Christian living. All right. He must increase, I must decrease. It's all gift. Everything that we have in our lives is a gift from God. And if we could learn to see these things as gifts, if we could see the, the good that God is working, because he does work all things for our good, we would have so much more contentedness and peace. And so really the, the, the trick of, of, of growing and maturing is, is learning that it's not about you and that you've decreased so Christ may grow. And to see more and more that it is all Christ's gift to you. And uh, that is hard. So if you are overcome with discontent, fix your eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. And remember his good and gracious gifts to you of both body, soul, and everlasting life. And with that said, let's confess the creed and then go pray the litany. So, um, the Apostles' Creed today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray today the litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessing, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, 
Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The prayer of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, your servant Silas preached the gospel alongside the apostles Peter and Paul to the peoples of Asia Minor, Greece, and Macedonia. We give you thanks for raising up in this and in every land evangelists and heralds of your kingdom, that the church may continue to proclaim the unsearchable riches of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Closing prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. All right, off to go set up for Lent. So have a good day, everyone, and the Lord be with you. But good timing, Daryl. We're just taking off. Bye.